Hey everyone, it's Daphne. I'm back and we're working on page seven, page seven. So this is a cut apart um, that I'm going to feature on this page. And so I just mounted it and put a hinge on the back. And we are going to do a reverse waterfall just like we did on page uh, six. And this, um, this flap is based on the size of the cut apart, which happens to be just shy of four by six. So I just went ahead and trimmed it down so that it was matted perfectly here. And then um, I planned the size of the reverse waterfall based on that. So it's gonna be just shy of four inches wide. Okay, there we go. And now the first flap that we're going to put in is the next largest one. <clears throat> it is six, six inches tall. So again, it's just shy of four. It's three and seven, three and seven eighths by six, three and seven eighths by six. <clears throat> and it's going to go flush with the top of this. So I'm just going to line these two up and lay it down. And I'm just trying to make sure that's not pulling out from the sides either. Okay, so it's tucked in nice and neat behind. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and add our um, opposing magnet. And we'll put a glue dot on there. Okay, now that we've got our magnets in, we can go ahead and cover. This is going to go on the bottom, and it's just the same as, it's the same pattern as page six. Sorry, I had to think about the page I was on. Okay, this is going to cover up our magnet on top. <clears throat> and as I mentioned in page six, I am running shy of paper. I still have page eight yet to go. So I may come back and add some additional paper to the other sides of these panels. But for now, I'm just putting a one inch trim on the bottom. <clears throat> this one I wanted to cover completely because of the magnet. Okay, so then we take the next smallest one. So this is six, this is five and a half, and then five. And they're all the same width, three and seven eighths. But we really need to base that on the size of the cut apart. And I noticed that all the cut aparts are not the same size, so they may vary slightly, the width. One of them was, you know, worked out for four and this one's three and seven eighths. So make sure you trim these down to fit whatever um, cut apart you use here. <clears throat> or just use a standard and use a regular pattern. Although having said that, I'm very tight on paper. I have built this album in sequence. So I am on page seven, build seven. Um, and I've got paper, I just don't have, um, I have big paper. I have lots of uh, trim pieces left. Okay. And then the last one is going to go to cover this spot right here. And I need to trim this down just a little bit on this side and just a little bit on this side. <clears throat> Should work. Beautiful. So this is going to go right here, and then I'm going to put another one inch strip, although I don't see what I here it is. In the case of all these one inch strips, I've only glued three of the four sides. <clears throat> 
it's that time of year where there's mosquito hawks everywhere. And one just flew into my vision in my craft room. Uh, it's funny because we don't usually get mosquitoes. Uh, San Diego's not really known for it. And then I'm up on top of the hill where it's windy. So we really don't usually have a problem with it. <clears throat> but we certainly get the mosquito hawks. Okay, so this is going to go right here. And again, we're going to glue three of the four sides. So it's a little tuck spot. And I'll just throw that anywhere, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Oops, I went over the flap sizes pretty quick, so I will definitely have that in the cut list as well as run banners so you guys can catch that. And then these two designer papers are split five on one side, three on the other. And uh, they go side by side, page six and seven. So you get these two patterns on both sides. There we go. That I curled my corner a little. That is page seven. Okay, guys, I'll be back soon with page eight.